So when I look at a photograph in an archive, it's a collection, what I'm thinking about is the way that that photograph has circulated through society or a photograph that's quite similar to it, be it a family photograph or a photograph that documents a particular era or a photograph that represents a particular type of behaviour. And so I'm thinking about the systems in which that photograph has circulated, uh, be it Hollywood cinema or be it in Thai witchcraft or be it on an island. I, I'm thinking about the way that photographs have their own their own lives and they exist within certain structures um, and they're public ones and they're also private ones. So when I make a series of photographs uh, I'm interested in using the strategy of collage, a digital collage. I am interested in say what would happen if I have what appears to be two or three very disparate photographs that are then layered with a shape that resonates across different photographs. So effectively I'm creating a kind of connection using form but at the same time I'm tearing it apart by what is pictured and represented underneath that form. Whenever I work in a series I'm interested in I guess disrupting or thinking about the way that I can emphasise the original space-time of the photograph. By collaging a photograph, I'm effectively bringing two different space and times into the one frame. By bringing that into a very new framework, which is the present, I'm kind of working with time more than I am with photography, or I'm bringing a new kind of shape or an image to time. The present is what abstracts the original meaning of the photograph from its historical kind of context. I guess it's kind of when you like thinking about strata, like geological strata, like every layer of sediment has or symbolises a particular different geological era. And so taking something out from the bottom layer and bringing it into the top, I want to know what kind of stories we can kind of consider by looking at those two together. The way that I work generally is informed by my cultural background. My grandparents migrated to Australia from India, so they were living in India under the British regime. They were migrants from Portugal and um, Spain. My mother also migrated to Australia from Thailand, so she's half Burmese, half Thai. I don't really have any other kind of connection to Australia other than with my grandparents and my mother. I guess photographs have tended to be like this sort of bridge between my family heritage and myself. My grandfather was a photographer and he would bring out his old rangefinder camera and we'd go into the garden and take photographs and then this would be followed by then looking at albums from India, accompanied by stories from the past. And so these photographs would often come alive for me through him. These collections of photographs often connect us to the past and can either kind of construct it for us or it can be a sort of disparity between the story that's told and what is represented in the image. What I'm interested in really is the photograph's ability or the collection, their ability to effectively debunk or kind of obscure a story or a narrative in the ways that they're placed together. You might have a determined meaning by a group of photographs, but then you can throw a certain photograph in that sits outside of the collection that completely completely challenges the whole story. When I made the work Pleasant Island, I drew on a range of historical archive photographs of Nauru, and I joined them together with a lot of transcripts that were made by security personnel in the refugee centre. So what I was trying to do, what I wanted to do, was bring together a range of different photographs that would create a, a narrative and suggest a connection between 
the beach that is Nauru and um, the refugees on the island. I was really interested in what happens when people have a desire to look away from a difficult topic. And so the strategies that I think about using are beauty. And so I'm interested in the way that um, beauty and aesthetics can actually draw a viewer into a subject and then use that as a kind of point of seduction uh, as a tool to draw a viewer in. What I was thinking about was how you could develop a strategy for asking your audience to look at a topic that may not at face value be explicitly engaging with the refugee crisis but uh, who you know in over time who engage with that image and the series of images are made aware of a topic in a very sort of subtle way or a nuanced way rather than in an overt explicit way.